So, it looks like Microsoft may have been putting in some double time fixing problems and complaints that people have had with Windows 11. And they've actually done some pretty cool stuff. So today, we're gonna to be looking at what we can expect to see in the next update to Windows 11. This will be 22H2. Stay tuned. I'd like to thank today's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of online classes with members across 150 different countries. With categories like film and video, music, web development, leadership, and even lifestyle, there's definitely something you can find to learn on Skillshare. I'm currently taking a course by MKBHD on his entire process of shooting YouTube videos from beginning to end. This course has included some great tips in helping me to up my YouTube game. Also, if you don't have time to sit in front of the computer, you can take Skillshare with you by using their mobile app. I'm actually using this quite a bit. There's always something new to discover on Skillshare, with new classes launching every week. And because Skillshare is ad-free, you can focus your attention on what matters the most, and that's learning. The first 1,000 people to use the link in the description below, or just enter the code CYBERCPUTECH, will get a one-month free trial of Skillshare. Now, on with the video. Hey, Microsoft, you missed a spot. Recently, I did a series of videos about what I liked and what I thought sucked in Windows 11. Since then, I've had a chance to sit down and play with the dev preview, and I'm glad to say a lot of the things that I thought sucked have been changed. Either Microsoft is watching my videos, or I'm not the only one that think that stuff sucked. So, considering the fact that that video is gonna be outdated as soon as the next build comes out, I figured I'd get on top of it and make a video about what's coming in Windows 11 22H2. So since we have a lot of stuff to cover, let's get to it. So in this video, we're gonna be looking at the Windows 11 Dev Preview version 22.598.20. Depending on when you watch this video, there may be a newer development preview available, but I'm pretty confident that what we're looking at today is gonna be really close to what we see when 22H2 is released. Now with that said, the first thing that I wanna show off, I think is a really neat feature right here. When Windows 11 first came out, one of the big things that they talked about were their snap layouts. So if you went over and you highlighted over the maximize button, you got this little kind of picture here that told you where you could snap different windows and whatnot. However, they've really changed the system. Let me show you how they did it. If you come over here and you grab the taskbar, you see this little thing that drops down from the very top of the screen? We're gonna go ahead and move the window up to the top and it allows you to go through all of these different snap layouts and it gives you kind of a preview of what it's gonna look like once you let go. So like if I go over here and let go, it snaps into place. And I really like the animation that they're using right here to allow you to kind of visualize where this window is gonna go. I think this is definitely a big improvement to the snap layout system and I think it'll make it a lot more useful to us in the future. And another thing, I'm not gonna go over this really quick because honestly, I don't see it, but but apparently they've changed the transparency settings with inside of the title bar in different windows and stuff like that. So that's the transparency just on the title bar itself where you can kind of just barely see the background from the title bar itself. So it might just be less annoying for people to that get distracted easy to make it a little bit more monotone so you can't really see the background through it as much. So if Microsoft actually is watching these videos, then you know you really should make this setting something that we can customize. Let us decide what kind of transparency we want in the title bar. That'd be nice. So since we're sitting here right now in the quick access, let me go over another thing that's actually pretty neat. What we can do is I think we've always been able to pin folders in the quick access itself, but what they've added is the ability to pin files themselves into the quick access. So if we were to go down to this file right here, like let's say it's a still test document that I created right here, and we were to right click on it, ironically, we gotta click show more options. Seriously, Microsoft, with this show more options, just get rid of it already. Give us back our right-click menu. No one actually likes it. <laughs> so we click show more options, and we go over here, we can click add to favorites. 
And then from the add to favorites, now we have this document in our favorites section. So it won't just fall off of recents eventually. So if you have files that you access all the time, you can pin them right here into favorites. And it's actually a really useful feature if we didn't have to click show more options. So the next thing I wanna show you guys, unfortunately I can't get to work in the development preview anymore and that's tabs in File Explorer. And you know, I don't think this is coming in the next build. I think this is just something that Microsoft was playing around with and they've unfortunately disabled it. However, I did get some screenshots of it so I'll go ahead and put those on the screen right now so you can see what I'm talking about. But this feature, Microsoft, if you're listening, we really want this. This is one of my favorite things about the development preview and I'm really bummed that it's not included in it now and I can't show it off in the video. However, it is nice that I have these screenshots so you can actually see what it is I'm talking about. So, Microsoft, if you're watching this, give us tabs in File Explorer. Seriously, we really want them. Okay, so the next thing that I'm gonna look at right here, this is something that everyone's been complaining about, and that's previews in folders. So I'm gonna go ahead and open my pictures here, and I got some temporary pictures. And you know, they really did give us what we wanted. You can now see previews inside of folders that have images in them, and other documents and things like that as well. However, they're not the best previews in the world. I mean, you gotta admit, they've came halfway and given us the previews. It's just you can't really tell what's in it. You can just tell there's something in it. I guess that helps. So moving on now, the next thing I wanna show you, this has got to be one of my favorite new features in Windows 11, and that is, go ahead and close Explorer here. I'm gonna open the Start menu, and as you can see, the Start menu looks the same as it always has. It looks the same as it has in previous builds of Windows 11. However, there's a really cool new feature in the Start menu that you've gotta see, and that right there is finally giving us the ability to create folders in the Start menu. I'm gonna take all the junkware that Microsoft includes with Windows 11, and I'm gonna give it all its own folder. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and grab one icon, drop it onto another one, and it'll create a folder for those icons. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna throw all the rest of this stuff in that folder too, just like this. And then once we get it all in there, as you can see, the start menu looks a lot cleaner, and then we can click on it, and it has all of the programs in it that we wanted to put into that folder. And even better, we can even change the name. So we're gonna name it Junk, because it's all junk. This right here, I think, is a really cool feature. Being able to finally get our folders back that we used to have in Windows 10. And you know, Windows 11 has been all about losing features that we've had in the past, and luckily, we're getting a lot of those features back, so I'm real happy about that. Okay, so the next thing I wanna look at, we're gonna go ahead and open settings here, and that's in Windows Update. And right now, I have updates paused for the purpose of this video. I definitely didn't want the dev update updating the morning before I filmed and changed something or start blue screening, because keep in mind, development previews are beta, and they do have problems, and I didn't wanna troubleshoot those problems this morning. So anyway, right here where it says resume updates, if I had just installed an update on this system, I would get another button here that would allow me to schedule updates. And I went ahead and took a screen capture of that, and I'll go ahead and put that on the screen right now so you can see what I'm talking about. So essentially what this does is it allows you to schedule a restart after an update at a more convenient time. So if it really bothers you with the computer restarting all the time, this is definitely a really cool feature. You can schedule the update to restart your computer at a more convenient time. Seems like something that should have been in Windows a long time ago. But yeah, it is what it is. Okay, so since we're in settings right now, I wanna show you another feature that's coming in Windows and that's optimizations for windowed games. And to get to that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna to go to system and then we're gonna go into display. And then from display, we wanna scroll down and click on graphics. And then from here, we wanna change, change default graphic settings. And then right here, optimizations for Windows games. So essentially what this does is it reduces latency and helps to give you kind of a variable refresh rate within older games. If you don't play a lot of older games, this may not affect you. And it also only supports games that are in windowed mode, not in full screen mode. A lot of games, especially older games in full screen mode, already benefit from this. So this is something new that's just gonna be affecting games that are in windowed mode. So this next thing we're gonna look at is some really good news. For a long time now, I've complained that the default browser system in Windows 11 is messed up. Fortunately, this has finally been kinda of, sorta of fixed. If you come up here and click set default browser, you scroll down 
and find the browser that you want to make default. You click on it, and then before you had to go through and change every single thing. However, there's a little button on the top here. Now you can hit set default, and you're done. It's that simple. Now, this is something that's actually currently already been implemented in Windows 11, but I definitely wanted to add it to this video because I'm happy it's there. However, it's not perfect. Let me show you. See, the only downside with this right here is when you go to set defaults, you got to go into settings, you got to find the application, then you have to push the button. Here's the thing, right? If I go ahead and close Chrome and we're going to go ahead and open Edge. Now, Edge obviously is not defaults right now. So I'm going to click here. I'm going to go into settings. I'm going to go into default browser and I'm going to push the button. And that's it. It's still way easier to set Edge as the default browser than it is Chrome. Why, Microsoft? Just do the same thing. Let other browser manufacturers have the ability to single click change the default browser. Why is that so hard? I mean, seriously. <laughs> okay, so the next thing that we're gonna look at, we're gonna go ahead and close Edge here and we're gonna go back into settings. And this is actually a really neat feature, but it may only be something that certain people will use, especially if you are hearing impaired. But if you go into accessibility and you go down to captions, we can actually have live captions now from within Windows. And if we turn these on, we get this bar across the top of the screen right here that'll show us captions. And then this bar is also customizable. So we can click on it here, we can change its position from the top to the bottom, or we can go from the bottom to just have it floating on the screen so we can move it to wherever we want. And if we get this out of the way, I'm gonna go ahead and open up a window right here. We're gonna open up some video so we can actually see what it looks like. And as you can see, there it goes. I'm gonna turn the volume down a little bit so you can hear me. However, with the video playing, you can see the captions actually coming out on the screen in real time. So I think this is gonna be really helpful to people who are hearing impaired because this right here, it doesn't have any bearing on the website that you're on. If there's no captions available, this thing still will generate live captions. Now, it's not perfect. It definitely messes up a lot, but it's definitely handy. Okay, so let's go ahead and close all of this stuff now. And the next thing that I wanna look at is the task manager. Now, a lot of people don't think the task manager is a really big thing to be able to worry about. However, they made a lot of changes to it. So I'm gonna go ahead and right click here. We're gonna fire our task manager up. And as you can see right off the bat, the first thing is, is we finally have task manager in dark mode. And people who use dark mode love this because task manager has always ignored the theme and always been in light mode previously to this. However, now we finally have it in dark mode. But you can also see that all of our tabs are gone across the top. And that's because Windows went to more of a hamburger style menu with it on the side right here. And honestly, I'm not really sure how I like this yet. It's definitely gonna be something that's gonna take some getting used to, but if you click on the very top right here, it will give you the names of the different tabs if you do wanna click on it that way. But while we're here in Task Manager, let's go ahead and look at another thing that we can look at here, and that's Efficiency Mode. Efficiency Mode is essentially, you're telling certain applications that you don't want them taking up as much system resources. So if you had an application here that was using a lot of system resources, like this OneDrive, for instance, we can click on it and we can go ahead and click efficiency mode right here. Once we click on that, we're going to go ahead and turn on efficiency mode and it will put that specific service into efficiency mode. So if it's using a lot of system resources, it will limit the amount of resources that that application is able to take. Now, currently efficiency mode is only available for CPU usage. It's not available for hard drive or memory usage yet. However, that is something that is coming soon. And the hard drive usage one, I think is going to be really beneficial, especially if you're using a spinning disk. But if you're using a spinning disk, just stop. Upgrade to an SSD. Why are you using a spinning disk? Seriously, why are you abusing yourself like that? Just upgrade to an SSD. You'll love it. Trust me. Okay, so the next thing that I'm going to show you guys is a feature that a lot of people have been complaining about for a really long time. And honestly, this is one of those things that I didn't even realize was an issue, and that's drag and dropping to the taskbar. So if we have an app, if we have a document here, this is just a simple text document right here, and I'm going to go ahead and grab this text document. I'm going to drag it down into our notepad, and there we go. This is a feature that I didn't even know existed in Windows until everyone started complaining that it was missing in Windows 11. So, I guess it's useful, but 
I don't see myself using it that much. However, if you find yourself needing that feature, it's back. Enjoy it. Okay, so the next thing that I wanna show you right here, this is a complaint that I had about just the organization of the start menu. You have all the space wasted with recommended files and not enough room for icons themselves. However, Microsoft has definitely stepped up on this one. We're gonna go ahead and go back here. We're gonna click on personalization. And then from personalization, we're gonna click on start. And you'll see right here that we have different layouts that we can have for the start menu now. We can have more recommendations. So if we click on that, we have even more recommendations and less icons, or we can have more pins. So if we click on that, the recommendations are limited to two and we have a lot more space here for pinned icons. This is actually a very small improvement to the start menu that makes a huge difference. This completely changes my mind from before when I complained about the organization of the start menu. This simple implementation has made it so much more useful. Unfortunately, one thing that's coming in the next build of Windows 11 is the requirement for a Microsoft account in the home and pro version of Windows 11. You know, this is a topic I really wish Microsoft would reconsider, but as long as they require a Microsoft account, I will always find ways to get around it. And another thing coming to the new build of Windows 10 is unfortunately, if you're using web encryption on your wireless, you're no longer gonna be able to connect to your wireless because Microsoft has finally dropped support of web encryption. I, is this still even a thing? Are people still using this? I mean, it's been cracked for a decade. Seriously, people, upgrade your routers. But with that said, as you can see, Microsoft really has fixed a lot of the complaints that we had with Windows 11. You know, my recommendation may actually change on whether or not you should upgrade or not. I guess we're just gonna have to wait and see once 22H2 comes out and see how it runs. However, there are definitely a few complaints that Microsoft hasn't addressed in Windows 11. But luckily, we have ways to tweak Windows 11 to make it look the way that we want it to. For that, check out this video titled Fixing the Look of Windows 11, where I go through several different ways to tweak the Windows 11 UI. Have a great day.